What if I told you the first great racing event of the year was not the Daytona 500? Would you believe me if I told you the first great sporting event of 2020 was not the Super Bowl? Well, Marble fanatics know that's 100% accurate, because before any of that comes the premiere of Marbula One. And that's what we're going to talk about on today's episode of the Marble Insider. Hi, this is Professor CC19, Candy Crusher and Algadoo Marble Creator, with Episode 3 of the Marble Insider. But before we get started, comment hashtag JMR with your predictions for Marbula 1. I'm going to be talking about my predictions and the prediction model based on sand rally events, past performances in the Marble Olympics for these 16 competing teams, and overall speed-based performances and how that shakes out, how they're likely to do in one race, and who is likely to win overall, along with some personal predictions as well. Like I said, comment hashtag JMR with your predictions, and hit that subscribe button to see future episodes of the Marble Insider, along with my own Algadoo Marble Racing series, the Algolympics, along with an important announcement coming January 27th about new teams and the hosts for Algolympics 2020. Now, let's get started with the first order of business. Before we can get to Marbula 1, I have to explain a little bit about what happened. I'm going to go to a different frame here. And this was a comment from two weeks ago. That's when I started work on part three, thanks to this comment from Matthew Urias. Thanks so much for watching and commenting. He said, can you please make a part three? I love it. I love the jungle jumpers. Well... This was a comment on part two, which was events four to seven of 2019 ML and Green Ducks prediction. And I responded, so glad you liked the videos, but sadly the device with the recording of part three is no more. So that was the original part three. Events eight to 12, then it became eight to 16. A lot just happened. And unfortunately, this kind of got moved to the back burner with my other content because it was a very busy time. So... Part three is right now, so we're going to talk a little bit about the second half of ML19 first, and then we're going to see a slide of the overall standings, and then we'll get to Marbula 1, which is the main order of business. So event eight was the Summer Biathlon, one of my favorites, originally the triathlon, but the water portion was cut. Chocolatiers forced photo finish against O-Rangers and Jungle Jumpers. The, mo uh, the more important one there was Jungle Jumpers where Jungle Jumpers beat Chocolatiers by three thousandths of a second. First time ever that we needed that third decimal place in a sand rally event. Jungle Jumpers won gold, Chocolatiers silver. Event nine, hurdles, two new records, one by O-Rangers, then another in the semifinals by Midnight Wisps, beating it by over a tenth of a second, which I think that record's going to stay for a while. Chocolatiers photo finish against Hazers. This time it really hurt Chocolatiers because Hazers beat them out of the semifinals. Event 10, chaotic, crazy, and unpredictable. It was the Huelino maze. From start to finish, Oceanics made the final, although they missed the podium, and Pinkies got their first medal of the games. It was silver. Event 11, the dirt race. This was a crazy event. Seven of the 16 teams did not finish the course in round one. It did not matter if you were leading. It did not matter if you were stuck in back. You had an equal chance of getting stuck somewhere on a branch, on a rock, and, or in some cases, completely flying off course like Midnight Wisps did, and being stuck. Only one team did not advance, even though they finished. That would be Balls of Chaos. Oceanics did make it to the final. Even in the final, three teams did not finish the course. So, in total, 10 DNFs in the dirt race out of 24 marbles running in the three races. There was a photo finish between Raspberry Racers and Savage Speeders. Raspberry Racers picked up that bronze, and Pinkies with their first ever gold. Congrats to them. Event 12 was better than I expected in rafting. Indigo Stars getting stuck. Mellow Yellow, Thunderbolts, Jungle Jumpers take the bottom three spots because two members popping out of the raft causing penalty seconds. And one of the most underrated moments in ML19, Green Eye, Crazy Cat's Eyes, pops out of the seat in the raft, but balances for, I'd say, the last quarter of the course on nothing stable, stays in, does not incur any penalty points for Crazy Cat's Eyes. I think that was an incredible performance by Green Eye, and I wish more people noticed that. New record by Green Ducks, they were the ones that kicked butt in Event 12. Event 13, O'Rangers got bonus points for a track defect, 
even though they were obviously eliminated in the elimination race, which was event 13, Oceanics finished last in their match. They fire Tide. Coach Tide is out. Lagoon steps in for the rest of the season. And a little quip there. Greg Woods had a little bit of trouble understanding this format, as did I. I was disappointed by the elimination race. It was more confusing than I thought it should have been. Uh, like I say, even Greg Woods had to correct himself as the format changed in the middle of the event. So everyone says event 14 was confusing. I think event 13 was. Event 14 was slightly confusing, but I still think it was more creative. Well executed. Indigo Stars finally on the board with a medal. Jungle Jumpers got their second gold of the season. Collision is awesome. I love event 15. Uh, I love Collision in general. Double tiebreak between BOC and Raspberry Racers was definitely the best moment in the semifinals. Balls of Chaos finally on the board with a medal. It was silver. They got another gold in the final. Event 16, the Sand Rally. I say anticlimactic because it wasn't the big battle between Green Ducks and Razzy Racers like everyone was expecting and as it was up until that point. But well done, Raspberry Racers. Eight medals in 16 events is something to be proud of. And I will click on the next slide to look right here. Here's the final standings. You can pause this to look at it. It was at the very end of the final video. Razzy Racers, 216. If you haven't noticed, that's what I like to call Raspberry Racers. 216, like I said, eight medals. They won. Green Ducks, 204. Hazers, 184 for third. Mellow Yellow, fourth, rebounding from 2018. For the first time ever, Savage Speeders have to qualify for 2020. Fifth, O-Rangers, Jungle Jumpers, Team Galactic, Balls of Chaos, Midnight Wisps, Crazy Cat's Eyes plummeting in the, in the final three events. Chocolatiers, Thunderbolts, my prediction of them winning was for not. They finished at 13th, not a good year for the blue teams. Indigo Stars, Pinkies, at least they're not in last. But Oceanics cursed as the hosts. Last place, no medals. So with that taken care of, let's move on to the current. Marbula 1 is going to be released before February, if all goes as expected. The 16 teams competing are Savage Speeders, O-Rangers, Rojo Rollers, Team Primary, Team Galactic, the hosts, by the way, for 2020 ML, Team Momo, Hornets, BOC, Midnight Wisps, Green Ducks, Mellow Yellow, Thunderbolts, Razzy Racers, Hazers, Snowballs, and Limers. Now, like I said earlier, there are three things that the model went based on. Sand rally performances, overall ML performances, and speed-based performances, along with the number of actual ML seasons each team participated in. For this first one, there were uh, th three groups of five and then Hornets. Hornets was kind of the one out because they are brand new to uh, ML. They're in Marbula 1. They were the runners-up in the showdown. And that's something for a rookie team, I would say. They could be the new Hazers or Green Ducks, based on how you look at it. But the first thing was, how many Sand Rally events have there been? There have really been one uh, purely Sand Rally event in each ML season, except 2018. And I did not include that, because that was the snow race. So we had 2016, 17, and 19. And I've listed the top eight teams. Mellow Yellow, Rojo Rollers, Team Galactic, Jawbreakers not in... Marbula 1, Team Momo, Thunderbolts, Balls of Chaos, Snowballs. So seven of the top eight in 2016 are competing. Only four of the top eight in 2017, Galactical Rangers, Thunderbolts, and Midnight Wisps. In 2017, were in the top half. And then once again, seven of those eight, BOC, Galactic, Ra uh, Razzy Racers, or Rangers, Savage Speeders, Thunderbolts, Midnight Wisps, all in the top half in 2019. There are five teams that have been in all three seasons, Sand Marble Rallies, for the... Um, ML main game, Savage Speeders or Rangers, Galactic, Mellow Yellow, and the Thunderbolts. They are five veteran teams. Pinkies, another one that's been in every season, but they're not competing here. Been in two of them, Primary, Momo, BOC, Midnight Wisps, and the Limers. Been in one of them, Rojo Rollers, Ducks, Raspberry Racers, Hazers, and Snowballs. And Hornets, like I said, the only thing they've competed in was the ML Showdown Rally, where they got second place, which is good. Um, so that's the experience that these teams have had, and that's the top half which we've seen. But there is a significant trend that's pretty obvious when you look on this. Look at Team Galactic. Third, first, second. They've meddled in all three Sand Rally events, 
and that's making them a clear favorite in the prediction models and with me, even though I am not a Team Galactic fan. In fact, I was fairly disappointed to hear that they were hosting this season. But let's look at it. I've been in the top half 100% of the time. Team Galactic all three times. Thunderbolts all three times. Balls of Chaos twice. The Wisps twice. And the Rojo Rollers, Razzy Racers, and Snowballs once. They had only competed once in the, the, that type of event. Two out of the three for O-Rangers, one of two for Momo, one of three for the Speeders and Mellow Yellow. There have been um, four teams that were never in the top half. Primary, Limers, Green Ducks, and Hazers. A little bit harder for the Hazers and the Green Ducks because they were only in it once a piece. Uh, for the top three, it got a little bit narrower 100% of the time. Galactic, three times. Always in the top three in the Sand Rally. Rojo Rollers, Razzy Racers, once. They have only competed once in a Sand Rally event. Hornets, technically, for the ML Showdown. One out of two times, 50%. Balls of Chaos in the top three. One out of three times, the Ra uh, o Rangers, Mellow Yellow, Thunderbolts. Never in the top three. Savage Speeders, Primary, Momo, The Wisps, Limers, Green Ducks, Hazers, Snowballs. All of them never in the top three. So, obviously, Galactic, with a huge prediction advantage, three for three in the top three. That's a lot of threes, but that is looking good for them. So let's take a look at the prediction model. Ranked chances of winning if all teams competed in one two-minute Sand Rally race. So this takes into account Sand Rally performances and overall speed-based performances. And it's not necessarily the order they would finish in if they were in a Sand Rally race. It's the likelihood that they would win in a Sand Rally race. Team Galactic, obviously the favorite. Oh, Rangers, given their history, getting the second spot. BOC, third. Thunderbolts, Raspberry Racers, and Hornets, having never competed in a full-fledged ML Sand Rally, in sixth place, the sixth highest chance of winning, beating the all-time veteran Savage Speeders. Hornets have never competed in an ML Sand Rally, and yet they're ranked higher than Savage Speeders. Rojo Rollers in the top half also, but then Green Ducks, Mellow Yellow, Midnight Wisps going down the list, Momo, Hazers, Snowballs, Primary, and, oh, the Limers fans are going to be unhappy that the model gives them the worst chance of winning a Sand Rally race. So this, remember, is just based on their Sand Rally performances and overall speed-based events. That's why a team like Savage Speeders, who's only ever been in the top half one out of three times, and in the top three never, is ranked seventh, because they are very strong in other speed-based events. Now I'm going to move on a little bit here so we can see team overall performance ranking considering ML season and placement and whether or not they qualified. So this is not necessarily has to do with uh, speed-based events or sand rallies. This is just whether or not they qualified and where they were ranked overall in every season. Savage Speeders, being in every season, being in the top half every time, obviously number one. Green Ducks, they were only in one season, but they finished second in their first season. That puts them in position two. O-Rangers and Raspberry Racers, former champions. Midnight Wisp being the lowest ranked of the former champions, still in fifth place. Mellow Yellow, Hazers, and Thunderbolts rounding out the top half. Then Galactic, surprisingly low. They have been in every season, but have never really done that well. Their highest performance was fifth place in 2017 with a flourish at the end in a sand rally. Then Balls of Chaos, Momo, Snowballs, Limers, Rojo Rollers, very low in this ranking. And then Primary in last of the teams. Now Hornets, like I said, they've never actually been in a Sand Marble, well, in any full-fledged Marble League or Marble Olympics. So it was not applicable fully for the Hornets. If the system was still applied, they would have ranked between 7th and ninth. So once again, either borderline or into the top half. Even though Hornets haven't really comp uh, competed on the same scale, they're still favored quite heavily by this prediction model. So now that we've seen the input of the prediction model and what it can do, there is a little bit of what it can't do. It can't give us a prediction of 1st through 16th finishing a Marbula 1 season. That's because there is no real history on 
a multiple lap sand rally race, the timing of the device used to bring marbles back up to the starting gates to begin another lap, or confirmed point system, whether it's going to be for an ML point system or similar to the sand rally point system. I know at one point it was considered that the sand rally should go to 16 marbles instead of 20, but they stuck with 20. So because of those unknown factors and the lack of data for that, the prediction model can't give us, this is the team that's going to come in first. This is the team that's going to come in fifth, all the way down to 16th. It can give its predictions based on sand rally performances, but since there has never been a event exactly like Marbula 1, it can't give us that. The model says Team Galactic has the strongest chances in a sand rally competition, but uh, it can't really go anything beyond that. But that doesn't mean you can't make your predictions. Like I said, hashtag JMR, comment your predictions below. And it also doesn't mean that I can't make mine. So now we're going to talk about my predictions. And I have predictions in two categories. Who I think has the strongest chances of winning ranked and the placements ranked. I did the, just the top half. I'm not going to go on the bottom half. And the top eight was actually really hard to put together. So strongest chances, I have four categories. Strong chances, contenders, potential but less chance, and the long shots. Let's start with the strong chances. Now, this isn't necessarily my top four. However, it is the four I think that have the strongest chances of winning. Team Galactic, I agree with the prediction model, even though, like I said, I'm not the biggest Team Galactic fan. But I have to put that aside. The facts are just there. They are strong in the sand. I think they have the strongest chances of winning. However, well, they're the hosts of ML, and there is the looming host curse of the Oceanics. Now, I don't think, I don't really believe in the curse of it, but I think the one t thing that might affect Team Galactic with that is the desire to make sure that curse doesn't continue. If they're training harder for ML and they're trying not to make the same mistakes as the Oceanics, my only doubt about them in Marbula 1 is they might be focusing more on ML. So that's my only doubt. I still think they have the strongest chances of winning. Balls of Chaos, O Rangers, and Raspberry Racers are my other team's strongest chances. Ironically, they are the top four in 2019 Sand Rally. I think Raspberry Racers, just with their consistency, they are so darn consistent. They have a really strong chance. Balls of Chaos, one of the prediction models less favorable in overall performances, but very favorable in speed-based events. I think they have a strong chance. And O Rangers, the O Rangers are just the epitome of teams when it comes to being clutch. Now, I like to say say clutch is the opposite of mellow yellow. That's why mellow yellow is in the long shots category. O Rangers came up, uh, up clutch with a huge comeback. They have faltered a little bit, but I think O Rangers are enough clutch that they have a strong chance of winning this. Contenders, Thunderbolts. They're not in my strongest chances category because they have had some problems. I have more doubts in them now after what happened with ML19. Savage Speeders, even though they are not ranked the best for a sand race, I think they are going to be a contender. But like I said, not in the strongest chances categories, just like the Thunderbolts, because they've had their problems, especially in the sand. Rojo Rollers, the prediction model says they should be lower. But I think that something unusual is going to happen. And I'll talk a little bit more about it when I get to my top eight. But Rojo Rollers and also Hornets. The prediction model is saying Hornets are going to finish at least in the top half, if not in the top three. I agree. Hornets are going to be one of the contenders. Now, potential but less chance. We have primary Green Ducks, Hazers, and Midnight Wisp. You cannot count out the Green Ducks. Green Ducks had a bad placement in the starting gate for the Sand Rally in the finale of 2019. I think they are better than that. They worked their way up several spots from that bad push out of the starting gate. Hazers are one of the teams that are very aggressive. They know how to race. However, they are very polar. They can be very good, very bad, not really a heck of a lot in between. Midnight Wisps, I'm going to give them the potential because I can see them doing good in this, but not as strong as some of the others. Primary, for me, is one of the most interesting things, because I think primary might be a big surprise. The model gives primary the worst chance 
in Marbula 1. Even though Limers were worst ranked in Sand, overall Team Primary was given the worst ranking. But one thing I know about Primary is they are aggressive as heck, and they play down and dirty. It's cost them in the past. However, I think that Primary has learned from that mistake, and I think if they get things together and keep that strategy up, they seem to have endurance. If they can keep that up, I think they might have a chance in Marbula 1. The long shots, Mellow Yellow, I'm not saying they couldn't be up there, but I don't think they have much of a chance at winning. Mellow Yellow has proven several times that when it comes down to things, they are not clutch. They can fold easily under pressure. I, I know the Mellow Yellow fans aren't going to be happy with me saying that, but hey, we'll see if they can prove me wrong. Momo, I wouldn't be surprised if they made it maybe into the top half. But when it comes to winning, I don't think Momo is strong enough. They have one of the strongest team bonds, but I don't think they're strong enough to win this event with some of the others involved. Limers? Limers are Limers. I'm not going to talk much about Limers. They were ranked very low in the order by the model. I don't think they're going to be one of the contenders. Snowballs also, sadly, I don't see them really thriving that well, even though a strong performance in uh, the ML Showdown might mean they could be in the... Uh, Marble League this year for 2020 might be more of a contender. Now let's talk about the top eight. Team Galactic is my number one pick. I have slight doubt, but I'm still ranking them number one because with all the evidence, it would be stupid not to. Team Galactic, I think, has the, by far the strongest chances. I put Thunderbolt second. I didn't lose all faith in them because I think they still are the team that, a kind of a team that's cut out for Marbula 1. Balls of Chaos I put third because I know they're strong. They're strong competitors. They are always the most consistent, but they're very strong competitors. And they have a very good track record in the sand. Oh, Rangers, the fans are going to be so sad that I put them right off the podium. I'm, I, I'm sad too, but I think they might just miss. They might just miss like they did in 2018. Hornets I put in fifth. I think they're going to be the biggest surprise of the season. Hazers sixth, even though the model does not really rank Hazers that well for a sand course. I think Hazers, like, just like Thunderbolts, they're cut out of the same cloth. I think they'll do well. Raspberry Racers, their consistency I don't think is going to land them on the podium this uh, for this event, but in the top half. Primary, I put an eighth. I think they're going to do enough to get up there. But then notice the wild card, Rojo Rollers. Now, for the wild card, I mean, if one of my predictions is wrong, and I mean any of them, I think Rojo Rollers is going to be the one to fill that gap. And notice one other thing, a very important thing that's missing here. Savage Speeders. Number one overall performances. Number seven for San Rally in the prediction model. And I don't have them in the top half of my prediction. I think something is going to go really off. I don't think Savage Speeders are going to do well in Marbula 1. And I put Rojo Rollers as the wildcard team for one specific reason. If Rojo Rollers joined Savage Speeders in the bottom half, it would be a surprise. But more so, I think Rojo Rollers are going to be the team to knock Savage Speeders off the horse that they've been sitting on for four Marble Olympic seasons. I think Savage Speeders are still going to qualify. Don't get me wrong for 2020, and some people are going to hate that. But I think Marbula 1 is going to be a wake-up call for the Savage Speeders, that they are not the end all to speed as they once were. And I think Roller, uh, Rojo Rollers are going to be the team to show it to Savage Speeders that a fellow red team might be the one to take the glory in Marbula 1. And I believe that is it for my predictions. That is it for the prediction model. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Marble Insider. Now, the next episode should be recapping some of Marbula 1, maybe as we get closer to ML 2020. There'll be a prediction of who's going to qualify. We know four teams for sure have the pre-qualifiers and the host, Team Galactic. But there's going to be a lot of interest stirred up. Marbula 1 is a very big series. It has been hyped for some time. It has a big sponsor, it says, on the Marvel Sports website. And I'm excited to see who that might be. I'm excited to see this series premiering in just a few days. So like I said, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Marble Insider. Hit the like button if you agree with my chances or if you like this video. Comment below with your predictions. Hit that subscribe button for more and for my Algadoo series, the Algolympics. Like I said, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Rock and roll on.